Hi, so in the previous video we looked at the government budget constraint and said that in this model we're going to be simplifying this for the moment to say that we have a balanced budget which is this condition here that government spending at time t is equal to the tax revenue at time t so our budget is balanced at all units or all periods of time we are going to add a couple of further assumptions that we're going to add to the model before we add in government spending. So the first of these is that taxes are lump sum. So lump sum taxation. What does this mean? It means that these taxes do not distort our economy. For example, we don't levy taxes on certain goods and services and not other goods and services because this will distort the relative prices of these goods and services and so we would then have a much more complicated impact on our on our economy so for the moment we're not going to do that we say that taxes are lump sum so we can just levy these for example we just levy everyone has to pay this certain amount of money as tax revenue and the government can spend that there are different ways of doing lump sum taxes, but we don't need to think too much about this. But just note that these taxes are not distorting our economy, so this simplifies things an awful lot for us. And our second assumption is that our government spending G is going to be pretty useless. In fact, com completely useless, and we're just going to think of it as being the government spending money on things that are not productive. So let's say non-productive and it also does not give us utility. So probably not a real term, but we'll just say non-utility. So for example, we could have productive government spending where we invest in infrastructure or say railways and we would we would gain some productivity in our economy from that and we could have utility increase in government spending for example we build some parks or just things that people like and they gain utility from but we are assuming that we are not spending government money on this where for example we're spending it on bureaucracy and red tape sorts of things we're not, we're not spending it on anything that's going to enter into our utility functions or our production function. And so again, this assumption is just to simplify it an awful lot. And we're looking to isolate the direct effect of government spending in our model. We don't want to think about all these indirect effects that would happen if we have productive government spending entering into our model. So now that we've got those assumptions out of the way, we can... We now know the exact form that government spending is going to take so we can add it into our model. So to start with we want to have our demand side or our equation that determines aggregate demand in the economy and so we have our aggregate demand function in each time period t here and this is going to be equal to consumption or our consumption function we added in investment in a previous video so we're going to have the investment function and now we're also going to have our government spending parameter gt we could say that this is some function of government expenditure but our simplifying assumption as we can see at the top of the screen says that our only expenditure is on this government spending so we have now got a demand side of this model the second thing we need to look at is the supply side of the model. So our supply side comes from our consumption and leisure choice that we've derived in previous videos, but now we have individual behavior being also affected by tax changes because we have said that we are going to levy some sort of taxes and these taxes are going to be lump sum. So lump sum taxes are going to affect individual consumption demand in our demand side of the equation, and it's also going to affect labor supply. So what we can do is draw up a little diagram to see how this will affect our labor supply. So let's start with some axes. And we can think about how government spending will influence our supply side 
So our axes here are going to be our consumption and leisure choice and how will government spending impact that. So we are looking at individual maximization because this is a micro-founded model. So let's look at a representative consumer's decision. We're going to start with his budget constraint here and we can draw some indifference curves. I will draw this in blue and we know we have some sort of tangency point where this consumer is maximizing utility at this point and so this consumer has some optimal level of labor supply and then they consume some optimal level of consumption. Now we have often drawn this diagram to contain consumption in period one and period two but instead in this diagram we're just looking at a static choice between consumption and labor supply in a certain period so our budget constraints and our indifference curve seem to slope a different way and this is because labor on the x-axis is not a good we could uh, think of this as a bad labor gives us negative utility by working what we're doing is we are losing leisure so it is giving us negative utility this is why the budget constraint now slopes upwards instead of downwards and why our indifference curves seem to be facing the other way but okay now let's think about what happens if we change our tax rate. Well, we have assumed that we have lump sum taxes, so these aren't distorting our decisions at all, or they aren't distorting the relative prices of anything. A lump sum tax is basically going to act like a change in wealth. By a lump sum tax, we are just taking money off someone. They don't have any way of avoiding this tax, so we are just decreasing their income. And we know that this is just a parallel shift in their budget constraint. So it would look something like this. We move to this green budget constraint, uh, a shift to the right or a shift downwards. And then again, the consumer maximizes with respect to this. So they find their tangency condition of their indifference curve and they will end up somewhere here. And let's just draw this in blue. And they move to say, optimal consumption one and optimal labor choice one as well. So we therefore see that our impact of taxes in affects our supply side as well. And um, through if we, what I've done here is I've increased taxes by shifting this budget constraint to the right. And so this has an impact of reducing consumption and increasing the leisure in the economy. So as we can see, the uh, tax revenue is going to, or the level of lump sum taxes levied is going to increase our labor supply in the economy and that's how it affects our supply side of the economy. And so as we go back to the consumption leisure choice that we have, we actually can write up this uh, maximization problem we've just done here on this diagram, but in a more formal mathematical form. So how can we do that? We know that our consumption leisure choice, we are choosing consumption such that we have consumption as some function of our uh, present value of income or our income in each period. And we would usually have this sort of expression where we have our wage rate multiplied by the amount of labor we supply at each period in time. But now we also, our present value of income depends on the tax that is taken away from us in a lump sum way at some period of time. And this will depend on lots of periods. Our consumption in period T depends on our present value of income. So what this present value of income looks like in every period. We also have to maximize this with respect to our intertemporal budget constraint. This is what consumers maximize with respect to. So we have had our intertemporal budget constraint in the past is just the present value of income. We had it as y1 plus y2 divided by the interest rate is equal to the present value of consumption. But now we have our y1, our income in period one, which comes through working but we are taking away in period one some lump sum tax value. And again, if we look at period two, 
we are taking away some level of lump sum tax, but we are looking at present values here, so we still discount that by the interest rate. Note that we are also discounting the lump sum tax taken away from the consumer in period two. This is discounted in the same way as the original level of income was. And this is just going to be equal to our present value of consumption, as it always has been on this right-hand side. So this is now our new intertemporal budget constraint, where we look at the disposable income now. We may call it, instead of just income, we have disposable income, which is our income minus taxes. So we have consumption as a function of the present value of income, but now the present value of income is disposable income. So we are looking at the present value of disposable income now, not just the present value of income. So a change in tax has the same impact as a change in income would in our previous video because this is lump sum taxes, it doesn't have a distortionary effect. So therefore a temporary change in taxes are going to cause a small change in consumption and a permanent change in taxes are going to cause a large change in consumption or a similar change in consumption to the change in tax revenue as we've looked at permanent and temporary changes in income in the past. So that just about wraps up this video. I mentioned that we would be looking at changes in taxes. Well, in fact, in the next video, we'll be looking at changes in government spending, which of course implies we have to have a change in taxes. So check out the playlist for that one. Subscribe for lots of future videos and do drop a like on this video if it was at all useful.